Oh. Today we're going to find out what happens when I drop my breakfast into the ocean. Let's eat. Hey guys, I'm still a bit hungover from the previous episode. I'm not sure what happened exactly. Anyways, I need to make breakfast and while I was doing my number one, I had this idea pop up in my head. I wonder how it'll taste. Hey Starbucks, if they're thinking about taking my idea, I want a piece of the pie too. And I'm not talking about the expensive stuff behind the glass. Let's start. That's uline.jobs. Last night you went out drinking and you did the right thing. You left the car at home. Thank you. But even though you slept, do you think you're okay to drive? If you drank a lot the night before, you could still be intoxicated. Only time, not a cold shower, a hot coffee, or a big meal can lower your blood alcohol concentration. Plan ahead for your night out and the next morning. You'll be helping to keep our roads safe. A message from SmartServe Ontario and Arrive Alive Drive Sober. Six City News Time, 721. Traffic and weather together on the ones brought to you by Frank, Leo, and Associates in the 680 traffic cruiser Jordan Kerr. On northbound 427, north of Dixon, the two left lanes remain blocked off all because of a collision. Only the right lane is getting by, and it's quite the squeeze because of all the construction happening through here. There's no shoulder where the collision is, so everyone's just stuck trying to squeeze through that right lane, and they can't really move anywhere until they get everything sorted out. It was a seven-vehicle crash, so they've got a lot of vehicles to move. They've moved some around, but they're still working on it. Northbound 427. 27 is absolutely jammed from the 401 up to north of Dixon. If you're taking an alternate like northbound Highway 27, well, that's pretty much fine up to Rexdale, and you can just take Rexdale back over to the 427 if you're looking for an alternate. That is likely, well, it's the best one for sure. Eastbound on the 401 is backed up from Dixie. Really heavy in the collectors. Delays to the 400 Express and collectors, but it's really jammed up in the collectors to the 427 ramps because of that crash. And another crash, East 401 approaching the 427 in the collectors to Two right lanes are blocked off. Uh, yeah, it's just adding to the delays through here. Westbound 401 is slow west of Brock Street to Salem. From Morningside to Kennedy in the Collectors. And from west of Morningside to McCown in the Express, where those two right lanes are closed off for construction. More delays from Warden to Victoria Park Collectors. Leslie to Avenue Express and Collectors. And Keel off and on Express and Collectors to Dixon. From the Traffic Center, here's Craig Gear. Closed ramp police investigation. Shuttering the northbound 400 ramp to Finch. No access there. Uh, delays from Finch to Steve as people are getting off at Steeles instead of Finch. A set found delays from south of Fifth Line to south of Aurora Road and between Shepherd and the Fort. Looking at the data, we can see that the cap sprung a leak at 250 meters, just as it enters the twilight zone. And the leak got progressively worse the deeper it went until the glass ball imploded at 334 meters. You might be wondering why some fruits like apples float, but grapes sink. If something is more dense than water, it will sink, and if it's less dense, it will float. Apples are less dense because they are made up of 25% air, whereas grapes are almost all water. But why do fruits begin dropping the deeper it goes? Well, as the air in the fruit begins to compress, at some point, the weight of the fruit becomes greater than the weight of the water volume it displaces as the fruit shrinks. When it crosses that point, the fruit will sink. 
So although an apple will float at the surface, if you pull it down to 120 meters, it will begin to sink to the ocean floor. Let's look at the implosion in slow motion. By the way, this would be a good time to remove your headphones. It's interesting that, although this was an implosion, it almost looks like an explosion, which is usually what happens after I drink coffee. Looking at the aftermath of the bottle, I'm amazed that the steel cap maintained the seal for that long, given the amount of deformation we can see right here, right before the implosion occurred. If it wasn't for the rapid rate of descent, the tiny leak would run its course and the pressure inside would equalize with the pressure outside eventually relieving the stress on the glass. I actually wasn't expecting an implosion, given the large cap size, so I was a bit surprised by the results. Alright, time for a taste test. I already washed the glass shards off. Let's try this grape. It's a little bit soggy, still tastes the same. Let's try blueberry. <laughs> I think there's a glass shard in there. Strawberry looks like it's been cut up pretty badly, probably by the implosion. Oh, strawberry tastes really weird. The inside's all soggy. It's completely saturated with no crispness to it. Let's look at the apple. The skin looks really shriveled up, actually. You can see here. Oh, that's gross. Looks like all the cells in there have imploded. Try a banana. You can see there's a discoloration on the outside. Oh yeah, it's completely saturated. Oh, let me give it a test. It's actually not bad. I don't taste any coffee in there but I have one more idea I want to try out. Okay, I figured in the first test, the surrounding water penetrated the fruits well before the coffee was released and it was diluted. What if we place the fruits inside a Ziploc bag and then submerge them in an espresso bath, and then seal it and pressurize the bag from the outside. Well, let's find out. Okay, I think it's ready. We held the pressure above 2000 PSI for about 5 minutes. Let's see what we have here. Hmm. 
Let's try this blueberry. Definitely tastes more bitter. Actually, I can taste the coffee infused inside of blueberry. That's interesting. Let's try a grape. I can find one. There we go. Oh yeah. You can definitely taste the coffee inside there now. Let's try this coffee flavored strawberry for the first time. Mm. That woke me up. Wow, we can see this apple actually split open. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. See the discoloration from the coffee infusion. Let's give it a taste. Here goes nothing. Mm. That's bitter. See this banana is saturated. Banana's bitter too. Hmm. I'm not sure about you guys, but I want to see this at a cellular level. So we're gonna. Check it out with this toy microscope. Hey, it's not the size that matters, it's how you use it. Come on guys, you should know that. Here are the before and after shots of the apple cells at 10 times magnification. In some parts of the apple, it looks like there are no visible changes before and after, but in the discolored sections, it looks like this, which is interesting. I may revisit this microscopy idea with different stained tissue samples and proper lab gear on future episodes, if you guys are interested. I'm curious what happens to the cells after an implosion shockwave. Well, there you have it. Behold, a new culinary taste du jour. Judging from my taste buds, I would say fusion is possible, but don't take my word for it. Let's see what Gordon Ramsay has to say. That is delicious. Finally, some good food. Wow. Okay then, I guess we'll end on that note. Now, if you guys don't mind, I have some kids I need to feed. Plus, I need to get into work. It's a mess out there. See ya.